Hey guys, it's Gigi, and this year's Halloween themed video is going to be on these adorable little kawaii pastel Halloween themed cake pops. So I have four little spooky designs. So you have a Frankenstein, a little friendly ghost, a pumpkin, as well as a candy corn. So the whole process is very, very simple and I'll be showing you the steps as well as how I decorate them and what I used. This is actually my first time making cake pops and I'm so happy with how they turned out and I can't wait to make more and experiment more with different techniques. So let's get into the tutorial. You want to start off by making a cake and it can be any kind of cake that you want and you just want to put it through a food processor or just break it up with your hands. Next I'm taking some frosting and this is just some simple vanilla icing that comes in a can and I'm just going to be mixing that with the cake crumbs. You want to start off by adding a little bit of icing and then adding more as you need to and I'm just mixing it together with my spatula. You want to get it to more of a doughy consistency so you can mold it into different shapes and it's going to hold its shape. So to test it out, you just want to take a small piece, roll it into a ball, and see if it will stay its shape. And if it does, then the dough is ready. So I roll them out and portion them out into these little cake pop balls. And of course you can leave them this shape, but if you want to get a little bit more fancy, you can do different shapes. For example, for a candy corn, I'm making it into a triangular shape that is flat on both sides. I then also use kind of like a similar molding technique to make a little rectangular prism for the Frankenstein. To make a ghost, you want to make kind of a cone shape and then you want to start pinching at the bottom to pull out four little nubs and this is just going to make the ghost look a little bit more ghosty and spooky. And for the pumpkin, I'm just going to be keeping it a little ball. For the outer coating, I am using candy melts and definitely add some sort of coconut oil or Crisco into it to make it a thinner consistency for a smoother application. Using the candy melts as kind of a glue, you want to stick your lollipop sticks into your candy melts and once you're all done, put them into the freezer or the refrigerator to chill up so that they're a little bit more sturdy. After they've chilled and hardened, you want to go and take your candy melts and remelt them as needed. And for the ghost, I'm just going to be using pure white candy melts. And you want to gently tap the stick on the edge of the bowl so that the candy melts will smooth itself out and the excess will drip off. Next, I'm using gray to make the facial features. I wanted to keep the theme like a very pastel color palette, so instead of using black, I used a dark gray instead to give it an overall more softer look. And then taking some light pink to add some blush. So to allow them to dry without messing the outer coating up, I just took this old packaging and just stabbed holes in it so that I could just stick them in there and they'll stay there. For the pumpkin, I'm using a light pastel coral, like peachy orange color and doing the same thing I did with the ghost. And then I'm using a green color to add the leaves on top of the pumpkin. Since I only needed a little bit of each color candy melts, I just decided to buy one giant bag of white candy melts so I can customize the colors however I want and not end up wasting too much. Since this is kind of like a tempered compound chocolate, the one thing you should definitely not do, and I learned this the hard way, is to use any sort of water-based food color. Water and oil don't mix, and if you add a water-based color, it's going to make the chocolate seize up and it's not going to be usable at all. So definitely look for a oil-based food coloring. For the candy corn, you want to first do a whole layer of yellow, and then you want to do it two-thirds of the way up with orange, and then white on the very tip. So for our little Frankenstein, I'm going to be using this pale pastel green color for the base, and this is just going to kind of look like a sickly dead zombie kind of skin color. And again, just tap it on the edge of the bowl to get all the excess off. So for the top, I'm going to be giving him kind of like a little hairdo, so you want to dip it into the dark gray candy melts, only about like a fourth of the way down. I also took two pearl sprinkles and put them on each side of the candy pop so that it kind of looks like the screws that Frankenstein has. And then I felt like his hair was just kind of lacking something, so I decided to take a little flower candy sprinkle and put it in his hair as well. Another detail that I decided to add was kind of little scar marks on his face. 
then once these have all hardened, this is what the little Halloween spooky cake pop collection looks like. Also, I'm going to be putting a survey up on here, so you can tell me which one is your favorite design. I am curious to know. If you want to participate, just click on the I in the top right hand corner. And of course you can eat them right then, but I decided to put them into little treat baggies and since I had so many left over from filming the tutorial, I just handed them out and gave them to a couple of my friends. So yeah, these would be perfect and very easy to make treats for trick-or-treaters or any sort of Halloween themed party that you have planned. So yeah, that is the end of this tutorial and I'm not sure why I'm doing this in my sleeves, but seriously, who doesn't love a chunky sweater? Like, come on. So yeah, happy Halloween guys, and I hope you have a great and spooky time. And as always, leave me feedback down below, tell me what you thought of this tutorial, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!